Hello everyone, my name is Pavel Masarovic. I'm the principal SAP Innovation Solutions Architect here at AWS, based out of Vienna, Austria. In today's short introduction, we'll talk about the Amazon AppFlow SAP Audata Connector. We'll talk about uh, the new functionality we added recently, uh, which is called the ODP-based extraction, and we'll go through the short demo. So I will briefly talk about the data extraction methods, uh, the Amazon AppFlow introduction, some key functionality. Uh, we'll uh, review the new architecture with the ODP extraction, and then we'll dive deep into the demo. So in a quick summary, when we last recorded the video with the Amazon AppFlow SAP Data Connector last year in August, uh, we talked about the data extraction uh, using the SAP Gateway uh, that you can see here on the side of the app stack that you can extract tables views or uh, CDS views uh, using the SAP Gateway and OData. With the new functionality of Amazon AppFlow supporting now fully ODP extraction, you can also extract various data sources or data extractors from BW or using SLT to extract your data. Just a quick recap, by leveraging the data orchestration method, uh, you're able to retain your application level context, which means that you have your relationship with the table as you are extracting from the SAP application layer. It also provides benefit of less transformation work outside of SAP and fully supports the change data capture through the operational data provision and use or uh, CDC. So let's talk quickly about AppFlow and the key functionality. So Upflow really provides the option to bring the data from your SAP system into S3 and connect to other AWS services to process the data. Upflow provides the no-code and pro-code interface for different user personas, which allows you to easily integrate your SAP system through the create connector profile and then flow that you can extract the data. It also gives you the option to lower your total cost of ownership as we are behind the scene spinning up the Glue and Lambda serverless functions to extract the data. Uh, using AWS Private Link, you can also enhance your security, where you can then send your data only through the private encrypted network and through the AWS Backbone by leveraging the Private Link. And as well, it gives you the additional speed and agility through the scalable environment at AWS. So if you look a bit on the uh, the roadmap and current life cycle of the SAP Audata Connector and releases so far. In August last year, we were able to release the SAP Audata read functionality so you can fully extract the data with, uh, uh, through the Audata and SAP Gateway. Uh, in January 2020, we added as well the write back functionality so you can as well write today data back to SAP using the Audata Connector. And since August this year, we also enabled the ODP extraction, which gives you additional change data capture capabilities. In today's focus is mostly on the last part, on the ODP, which we will also demonstrate later. So if you look on the architecture for the ODP, with ODP-based data transfers, the business context is preserved. We're retaining uh, business context from SAP data sources, which reduces uh, the business logic mapping efforts to integrate data with business objects from our SAP and non-SAP data sources. Uh, the ODP framework itself works on a provider and subscriber models, which means it enables you the data transfer between SAP systems and SAP to non-SAP data targets. Amazon AppFlow uses the ODP framework to support full data extraction and change data capture through the operational delta queues or ODQ mechanism. ODP provider, the data provided by the source SAP system is called the ODP provider. Uh, and there are multiple providers today that you can use. One of those being the SAP data source using the transaction RSO2. You can also use the SAP core data services or CDS views in the ABAP. You can also use the BW and BW for HANA system, so where those are the info objects or data store objects. You can also use the SLT or real-time replication of tables 
and database views. You can also use SAP HANA information views in ABAP source uh, types. And of course, uh, that all is done using the ODQ or operational delta queue. In the case of full data extraction, the data from source is written as a data package to an ODQ by the ODP provider using the update process. The ODP consumers and ODQ subscribers are the target applications that retrieve the data from the Delta queue and continue processing the data, which are referred to as uh, ODQ subscribers or more generally ODP consumers. In this case, Amazon Upflow plays the role of a consumer or the subscriber. That was in short on the theory. Let's now go into uh, the quick demo. So this is my AWS console. We're going to navigate to Amazon Upflow. In here, to create and extract the data you first need in the connections, create your connector profile by selecting from the available connectors the SAPO data type. As you can see here, I have already certain connectors configured, both public and private, but we'll just run it quickly through one new connection on what you need to enter. So first of all, you need to add your application host URL, which is typically your endpoint that is enabled with HTTPS certificate and TLS connection. So we can validate and support only the secure and encrypted connection. In the application service path, you need to enter the OData catalog, whether it's version two or four, as supported by Upflow today. The port number is the port for your endpoint. Uh, the client number presents the SAP client number, as well as the SAP logon language type. By using the private link, as already mentioned, you can also enable Upflow with private connection that is uh, not traversing through the public internet, but using the private capability. Next, you can as well use the basic authentication through the username and password, but you can also use the OAT2 through authorization URL and token generated. In the last, you can either use the standard encryption by the AWS own keys, or you can also override it and use your own keys. As a last, you just name your connection and continue with creation of the connection. So once the connection is created, you can navigate to flows and create the flow. In this test, we will extract one of the extractor from SAP in the transaction RSA5, which is the standard list extractor type for the VHDR, which is the sales order header table. So I will name it test VHDR. You can again overwrite the encryption. You can also add additional tags if required to identify your flow. In the next screen, you will select the SAP OData as a connector source name type and provide the connection to your SAP system. You can see I'm using the internal connection and it straight away as well already gave me spec status that the private connection was created successfully. In the next section, we'll select the defined sales header service, which provides the ODP object. In this case, you can see that it's navigate and filter uh, the entity of the extractor itself. Next section provides the destination for my extraction. In this case, it's a stream and I will choose my bucket for the end destination. By default, you can extract the data to JSON format. You can override it to CSV as well or Parquet. You can also aggregate all records, which means that all data will be aggregated into one single file, or you can keep it aggregated as per uh, the page sizes we are extracting from AppFlow. You can also add additional timestamp to your file name. You can also add additional or provide a folder structure with a timestamp for better navigation in the app flow. Now for the flow trigger itself, you can either use the on-demand or on schedule flow. On-demand will just always run the full extraction of the table. Well, where the flow on schedule 
will, as mentioned here in the note, and you can see this is one of the indicator that we identify in the upflow from a typical OData entity, that it is an ODP uh, endpoint or the ODP extraction, an entity, and will provide the incremental transform using the SAP Delta queues created. As you can see, the first execution will reset all the previous Delta queues for the specific user that you are using that exists, and for the entity of uh, at least VHDR extractor, and then it will uh, run subscription to the queue and provide the delta in it, which will then give you the option to extract the data incrementally. So if you look in uh, the SAP system itself, uh, this is my ODQ monitor. which you can call out through the ODQ MON transaction. And you can see here is my sales document header data uh, that has no subscription yet and provides the request for a subscriber. So now scheduled to flow to run every uh, two minutes just to capture any changes that we will as well use. And we'll just define the flow to start in the future and as you can see it automatically gives you only the option for the incremental transfer in the next section you will define the mapping of the source and destination fields in the table so as you can see we are reading all the data from sap providing uh, the, each data column of the of the table together with the type of the record so we'll map all fields to destination automatically you can also do it by providing the CSV files with the mapped fields. You can as well remove individual entries if you don't want to use them in your target extracted JSON file in this case. You can also modify the values and mask the values either by the first character or last character. You can also truncate specific number of characters in the field. You can also additionally enable validations and can say if certain data fields or, for example, company code is zero, you can either terminate the flow or ignore the record, which will then give you the message to the CloudWatch or monitoring service for the validation. In the next screen, you can define your filters. So if you have a really, really very large data set of data you would like to extract, and uh, you wanted to say that I will only extract certain company code, you can define them in here with the text criteria. You can also define additional filter up to 10 filters possible. You can also add additional filter for different field name, which gives you also the option then uh, to define additional filter and filter data accordingly. Now we will do the full extraction. So in the next, you will just review and create the flow. So all the settings we defined, you can see based upon the name of the flow, it already created a subfolder in my S3 bucket SAP upflow demo and the fields that we mapped. So we'll go ahead and create the flow. So once the flow is created, it's in a status of draft, which means I need to activate the flow because it's on schedule. Usually if you have on-demand flow, it will straight away uh, be able to uh, be triggered and executed from here, which we can then run through later. So we'll activate the flow, which you can see is now active. And in the run history, soon the flow uh, will be executed. It will provide the first runtime of the flow. I will also would like you to encourage to go through our log that my colleague KK put together for the data extraction with all the details, how the integration works. It's also mentioned how the incremental is working and uh, how the subscription is working in the ODQ one that we will go through as well uh, with the further details on specific things and as well important section which I would like to make you aware of are the prerequisites for creating the ODP based data flows and the minimum supported version of SAP systems uh, you can use in connection with SAP OData connector for ODP extraction.
So let me go back and see if the flow has been running yet. So we're still not on time. So let's wait a bit. In the meantime, I will switch here into the screen and also have a look in our queues. So you can see that the flow has been already executed because the new subscription came by 1519, which is the UTC time from my actual time 1719. And you can see that the initial delta was already initiated today. So in the status, initial delta and delta in it. And you can see that it extract is, extracted 5,852 rows from the table. So if I go, you can see here are my data preview uh, that has been extracted from the extractor. So if I refresh here, you can see that uh, we run the flow which generated 2.7 megabyte file and extracted 5,852 records. In the destination S3 bucket, you can also find the file be extracted, which you can see with the same timestamp. So I can also mark the file and through the action and query with S3, I can quickly have a look in my data that we extracted. And you can see here are my records from the sales order header table that we extracted. So the flow will be now running every uh, two minutes as we scheduled. Uh, let me now try to create a new record uh, that will basically uh, then create as well uh, extraction and we'll just extract incrementally. Uh, the data from the from the table itself so we'll just give it another minute to run one additional flow that will show zero records proce processed because there are no any changes in sap and then we will go ahead and create a new record in the va2 transaction for a sales order and as you can see now the flow run again in two minutes so 1721 and processed zero records and zero kilobytes on the transfer okay so we'll create a new order okay so we'll just go ahead and save the order providing the customer reference and the date and you can see the order 4178 has been saved so you can see now this is our new order that we just copied and created today and now we can see by the next execution there was one record extracted if we double check that with the last queue execution you can see here a one row extracted which is exactly our sales order that we created recently which pulls only the delta changes from the original data extraction if we look in uh, the target bucket this was the full extraction of the 0.6 megabyte data file uh, this is the one only with the single order that we just created so you can see that's the record 4178 that we extracted and the date that was all thank you very much for listening i hope you find it useful and if you have any questions don't hesitate to contact us.